Georgia Lieutenant Governor Casey Cagle uh, firing back at Delta Airlines, threatening to kill its $50 million tax break after that airline cut its ties with the NRA. Cagle slamming the airline's actions, tweeting, I will kill any tax legislation that benefits Delta unless the company changes its position and fully reinstates its relationship with the NRA. Corporations cannot attack conservatives and expect us not to fight back. Well, of course, Delta's headquarters resides in Atlanta, Georgia, and that makes this whole thing a lot more intense. With me now, Ned Ryan, American Majority CEO and contributor to The Hill, Sarah Westwood, Washington White House examiner, White House correspondent, and Ashley Pratt, U.S. News and World Report contributor. Sarah, let me start with you. Uh, this is huge, obviously, around the country. How's it resonating in D.C. right now? Well, I think that there's a lot of outrage, obviously, especially on the left, at the fact that you have a government threatening retaliation against a corporation for taking a political stance that they don't agree with. And I think from a conservative perspective, you do have a lot of skepticism of setting this precedent where you have a corporation exercising its free speech rights, whether you agree with its decision to sever ties with the NRA or not. And then you have a government official threatening a punishment in response to that. So obviously, Georgians and people around the country are free to exercise their own free speech rights and boycott Delta. But I don't think anyone wants to see the precedent set of the government getting involved in this kind of political dispute. Ned, how do you see it? No, I agree, actually, with Sarah. I mean, here's the thing, though, Charles. Delta was making a political decision and hoping they could get away without any consequences. And, you know, when you make these kind of emotional decisions, you know, from pressure by these teenage social justice warriors, you get into these these messes. But you know, a couple of things really quick, Charles. The NRA members don't join the NRA to get corporate discounts. In fact, it's the opposite. The corporations wanted the relationship with the NRA to have business from these 5 million members. So if Delta wants to cut off its nose to spite its face, more power to them. But I agree with Sarah on this. I don't like it when the Democrats use government to pick winners or losers. And I don't like it Republicans use government to pick winners or losers. So I'd prefer to let uh, the, the American people and the people of Georgia pick the winners and losers by just saying, hey, you know what, if we don't like Delta's decision, we'll just boycott them. Well, another issue uh, now is uh, back, uh, then, of course, this whole thing is ta we're talking now about the, the, the gun debate, if you will. Ashley, a lot, of, a lot of focus specifically today on the age requirement. Now, you know, I'm not sure, you know, how much of a difference it will make, and I'm not sure where the White House is right now. We got mixed messages, but do you think it would be a step in the right direction if we had a federal mandated age of 21 years old for both handguns and rifles. I think it is a step in the right direction, but I agree with you, Charles. I don't know what good it would do. I don't think it would have prevented any of the, you know, attacks from happening that we have seen. Um, I do think in this case, though, Congress is trying to do something. I, I would hope there is a lot of outcry publicly after this Parkland shooting that I think has now called for action. So if this is a small, small step that they're going to take to allow for more debate to continue to happen around what we should be doing and what we should be looking at and what regulations maybe should change in light of this, then I think that's a positive step in the right direction. Ned, you wrote an article about this two days ago. <laughs> I did. I did. Uh, you know, I think there's some virtue signaling going on. The average age of mass shooters in America is 35. So, Charles, I'm not really sure what bumping the age up to 21 really gets us. Same time, I'm not really hearing a lot of solutions from the left on how we actually make our schools safer and make them harder targets and make them more secure. I mean, I think that we need to go, and I've said this before on your show, we need to repeal the 1990 Gun-Free School Zone Act and allow teachers that are adept and have skills, whether they're veterans, retired policemen, to have the ability to have concealed carry. So I think there's other things that I think are a lot more meaningful to bringing about safety to our school zones instead of saying, hey, we're going to raise the age right. to 21. Right. I don't think that gets as much of anything. Sarah, it looks like we're going to have a, a mixed solution, if you will. Uh, there's going to be some federal things, particularly driven by the White House and local actions, uh, like we saw today down in, the, you know, in Florida, where we had a press conference with some of the parents of the victims. It seems like they want to focus immediately on making schools themselves safer and have the gun debate later. Right. I think what you see is Democrats making this debate about guns. You see Republicans making this debate about school safety. And the reality is that you may need some kind of legislation that addresses both issues. But uh, on the issue of arming teachers or allowing guns into the schools somehow, that's something that is more likely to be addressed on the local level just because state by state has such vastly different regulations about who can obtain a gun and when. But there are other things like raising the federal age for obtaining a semi-automatic 
automatic weapon, which, by the way, would have potentially affected the outcome in Parkland because the self-confessed shooter, Nicholas Cruz, was 19 who legally purchased a semi-automatic weapon. This is a concrete solution to address a problem that came up in Parkland. All right. Uh, well, we'll obviously continue to cover this, but we've run out of time for this particular segment. Thank you all very much. Really appreciate it.